Stroke panel and stroke settings in Illustrator. Today we'll talk about the stroke settings here at the top and the stroke panel in Illustrator. Now, when you create a new shape, we'll see by default that the shape will be with white fill and black stroke. Now we can turn off the fill by clicking on the none and stay with the stroke on the ellipse. At the top, you'll find the stroke color that we can change here from the swatches and the stroke width. As if I'll click on the arrow, you'll find different points, so 10 points, to increase the stroke width. And that will apply on any shape. If I'll use the rectangle now, or a polygon, all of them will have the same stroke, width and color. By selecting the shape with the selection tool, you can just change the color and control the width. Now you'll find on the right also the stroke panel. And if you don't see all the options, you can click on the small menu here and show options. And that will reveal the options of the stroke. Now we can find here the width or the weight here. You can also use the arrows to in increase the stroke. And a few more options. Now some of them will work only on the rectangle and not the ellipse and polygon. For example, if I'll use the align stroke, you can see that the stroke align to the center. So if let's say I'm using 10 points, it will have five points out and five points inside the shape. Same with 40. 20 points and 20 points. But if I'm using a line stroke to inside, it will align the stroke, the whole 40 point inside the shape. And we have also the align stroke to outside. So that's the line. And the 40 points are outside the shape. Inside, outside and centered. With a rectangle, we can also use corner. So as you can see, now it's meter join. That's the corner. But I can also use round join or bevel. Make them a little bit round. And same thing with the polygon. Now you can also add dashed line. Now it's 12 points and you can control the gap. So if I'll click 10, I'll have 12 points dash and 10 gap. If you continue, it might change the gap each time for the stroke. If it's gonna be the same gap, you can just type it here at the start, 15 and less gap. But we're creating a dashed line. Uh, let me show you also the arrow head. So let's say I'm creating a line, just a simple line without the dash. You can use the arrow head. There are different arrows the list for the stroke let's pick this one and the scale for the arrow so if I'll use 50 make it smaller make sure you use both 50 and you can align the to extend arrow beyond the end of the path you can see it's here the end of the path and then the arrow or the path length
Last useful feature that we can use with a stroke will be the profile. So I'll create again ellipse. Let's use less stroke. Now I can use different profiles for the stroke. There are five profiles here, and you can see when I clicking when I'm clicking on the width profile one, just creating a new stroke profile, making it slightly different. And the interesting thing that you can use also and create your own profile by using the width tool. So if I'm selecting the width tool and click and drag on my path and just increase or decrease the stroke width. Also from here, that, that depends on the anchor point, it's recognizing the space between them. And you can see that it's created a new profile and we can save it and add our new stroke profile to the profiles. Add new, let's call it number six and click OK. And now I can apply the stroke profile to any other stroke in my document. Now let's go back to the dashed and show you the cap. So now we have this cap and if I'm using round, let's just increase the gap so we can see Now you can see that the path will create the dash line will be round or projecting. So you can control the cup and it will apply also for an open path. Click none. You can see that that will change when adding the cap. So these are all the stroke options. You can find them at the top as well. If I click stroke, they will appear, stroke weight and color.